Hey guys, Winston Churchill cigarette problem here with another amazing video. Oh boy, I'm so excited. I can't wait to show you guys what's in this amazing video. Look at all the look at all the backdrop I gave you guys here. Uh, trying to bear no expense in providing you guys with quality production value you could only find on on um, on Pig Cake. Uh, so today I thought I'd show you guys a little bit of a cardistry move. A little bit of a cardistry move. I've read in the comments, people keep tend to ask, hey, pig cake, show me something hard. Hey, pig cake, you're easy to do card tricks that play for absolutely everyone aren't cutting it anymore. I need some of that sweet, sweet advanced stuff. And luckily for you guys, I have something just like that that I wanna show you guys today. A little bit of a cut, my favorite cardistry move, which was actually buried in a video I made long ago called How to Become Illusionist. Some of you guys may not have seen this video, so I thought today, hey, I'm gonna show you guys this fancy false cut, and why not waste about a, a minute of your time on this introduction to get to that sweet, sweet 10 minute mark. <laughs> uh, but before that, let's just talk a little bit about car cardistry. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I was growing up, we didn't have cardistry. We had card flourishing, and card flourishing was something that was relegated to the lower tier of magician, the juggler, if you would, the equivalent of the average mime. However, in today's day, you could see that cardistry has become a huge part of the playing card movement. Now, in 1992, we had Chris Kenner, who actually came up with this wonderful little Sybil cut that kind of spawned off into this new generation of what cardisters began referring to as cardistry. I, I put pizza in the microwave without a plate because the heat kills all the germs. And if you think otherwise, you don't know about science. Now don't get me wrong, your boy Piggy isn't hardline on flourishing. I'm not saying, hey guys, don't do any cardistry. I don't agree with cardistry, that's not what I'm saying. I don't want you guys to jump out of your, your mom's house and try to find me and, and try to challenge me to a fight. But what I'm saying is that there's a time and a place for absolutely everything. So what I mean by that is you have to think about where you're gonna insert your little flourishes, your little bits of cardistry, so that it doesn't deter from the overall presentation of what you are trying to exude to the spectator. Imagine, if you will, a little bit of an experiment. So let's say our friend here is a spectator that I'm about to perform a card trick for, and I happen to have my, my favorite deck of playing cards here, ready, ready to show the spectator. So I say, hey sir, I'm gonna show you a card trick. No. No? No. Well, too bad. You're about to watch me perform a card trick, whether you like it or not. Uh, he, I'm going to mix the cards up in a very thorough fashion to make sure that all the cards in this deck are lost and mixed and uh, in a different position than once they began, sir. So just uh, be assured that I'm shuffling the cards in a very thorough fashion right now. Are you satisfied with the? And you see the way he's reacting? That's the same way a spectator is going to react because there's no context to my move. There's no context to me shuffling the cards. Right now I'm just shuffling the cards in a way that I'm trying to pretend is a normal way of mixing cards. However, it's clear to the spectator that I spent entirely way too much time learning these goddamn flourishes. All right, so what I wanna show you guys today is a little bit of a cardistry move. However, I want you guys to keep in mind that there is a context for cardistry. There is a context for flourishing. And if you're just gonna perform it willy-nilly for the spectator, then you're, you're defeating the, the point. So I know what you're thinking sitting there on your uh, over expensive gaming chair. How can I support your channel? Well, you can just check out the links in the description below. You can go to pickcake.me and check out all the magic products that I happen to sell. And if you want, you can join the Card Academy where only $5 a month takes you from a beginner all the way to an expert in card magic. Oh boy, I'm so excited. I can't wait for you to check, <laughs> to check it. To check it out please check it out G give me your money and your other question is of course hey piggy so when am i supposed to insert all these flourishes that i've learned from perusing instagram and youtube videos of very attractive canadian and california based magicians well um you figure it out you, you figure out the right context but for me personally i think when your character is that of an overconfident twat that's when you should insert a little bit of cardistry and flourishing 
into your magic. So if you have a little bit of a personality that exudes confidence and you're going to try to bring yourself down while simultaneously bringing the spectator up, then you should insert a little bit of flourishes, get the spectators a little bit agitated as to your skill with cards so that when you fail, that moment becomes a little bit more impactful. And then you're able to overcome that failure through a twist or whatever you want to insert at the end of your particular card trick. But think about context and don't just do flourishes without thought. So without any further ado, let's get into this particular flourish in this video. Uh, neck reveal. So the flourish, if you guys haven't seen from uh, one of the thousand times that I've done this on the channel, looks a little bit like this. Now it's a full deck false shuffle from this angle. It looks a little bit like this. If you guys are looking at the uh, B-roll right now of me doing it in many different contexts, I, you would notice that it looks good on your Instagram videos as well as your very, very oversaturated YouTube videos. However, the flourish itself is not that really hard to do. It's a combination of a couple Sybil ideas as well as some Dan and Dave innovations. And uh, you'll be in no time doing this flourish if you have a modicum of skill in cardistry. So here is the explanation to that. Uh, so first things first, you gotta take a deck of regulation playing cards, just like this. This is a deck of chicken nuggets and it's quickly becoming one of my favorite decks of cards, just because it's an imitation of the classic Jerry's Nugget, which is a very expensive deck of cards. If you happen to have a deck of Jerry's Nuggets that you don't find uh, particularly interesting, you can check the PO box below for where you could send it uh, to dispose of it. Um, so first things first for this particular cut, if you notice the breakdown, first thing that you're doing is you're starting off as a Sybil. So to get into that, you're going to use your little index finger of the right hand to lift up about a third of the deck. So you notice that's the first action here. You're gonna lift up about a third of the deck. The grip initially is this high mechanics grip. So usually mechanics grip in the left hand looks like this. However, high mechanics grip is not a mechanics grip that has taken narcotics. <laughs> it's a uh, grip where the cards are being held at the fingertips in the left hand. Now from this position is where you lift up about a third of the deck with your right index finger. So that looks like that. Next, you're going to use your left index finger to lower a third of the deck while still holding a middle packet with your middle finger and your thumb at the end. You notice that my thumb is not only out of focus, but it becomes the center point where all the packets are meeting, the, the fulcrum point, if you would where all the packets are meeting and conjoining, much like a special twin. So from this position, what's gonna happen is that you are gonna rotate this entire situation towards your body. So you notice that when I do that, my middle finger is holding this middle packet. So from this position, you're gonna rotate this middle packet towards your body. I notice that your left hand's middle finger and thumb are free to, to do a little bit of a sneaky grabbing, which is exactly what's gonna happen with this middle packet. So as you rotate this entire situation towards your body, your middle finger and your thumb are going to grab this middle packet and you're gonna let go with your middle finger of the right hand. So you notice right now, my middle finger is no longer holding this packet because it's being held by my left hand. So that in focus looks a little bit like this. So you notice right now that my middle finger and thumb are grabbing that middle packet and going to let go with my ring finger or middle finger of the right hand. By the way, you can't hold it with your ring finger. You can hold it with your middle finger, whichever you feel comfortable with. It's a free country. So at this point, all that's gonna happen is that you are going to revolve these two packets up and around, which leaves you in this position, the Z position, which is very famous and indicative of the Sybil cut. So one more time at speed, it looks like this broken down in a super Michael Amar LNL publishing slow motion. It looks a little bit like this. Now from this position, you're in a little bit of a pickle because how are you going to maintain the flourish as well as engage the spectators reaction by simultaneously blowing their minds with a little bit of cardistry. Well, here's how we get into the next phase of the cut. 
After you've completed this first section of the cut, you notice that you're in this position where you have a packet in mechanics grip in the left hand. Your forefinger of the left hand is currently balancing a packet as is the middle finger, ring finger, and thumb of the right hand. So you're in this position. Now what's gonna happen is that you're gonna lift up with your forefinger at this packet that's in your right hand. So one more time, you're gonna lift up with your forefinger. At the same time, you're gonna execute the first step of a molecule cut by Dan and Dave. I've heard that you gotta be extra careful when crediting flourishers, because if not, they get angry and they start to throw cards linen with Cheeto dust at you. So here, from this position, you're gonna put pressure with your thumb. That pressure is gonna separate this packet and it's gonna lift it up. Now what's gonna happen is that you're gonna lift this packet up and over this packet in the left hand. So at speed, it should just look like this action right here. Now slow down, notice that you are swing cutting, so you're lifting up at this packet at the same time that your thumb is exerting pressure to lift up this packet up and over the packet that's in the left hand. So what this is gonna do is that this is just gonna reverse those packets and thus leading to a conclusion where the packets are false shuffled. So one more time, it looks like that. So now that you're in this position where you have a packet in the left hand and now you have two packets in the right hand, all that's gonna happen is you're gonna use your forefinger of the left hand to come over and swing cut, swivel cut, I apologize thoroughly, swivel cut this packet onto the left packet, but out jogged. You notice that it's out jogged at this position. So one more time, you're in this position over here where you just swap these two packets. Your forefinger is going to swivel cut these out jogged into the left hand. And now you're left with one packet in the right hand. Now from this position, it really depends on your feel for the cup. But what I like to do is this wonderful little double lift that I always call the Gordon Bruce double lift. However, people have been so thorough to correct me that it's in fact a Stuart Gordon double lift. So this right here is the move that you would execute. And all I'm doing is sliding my thumb down the length of the card to uh, turn it over in a flourishy way. So now you notice that you have this out jog packet as well as these two packets that are uh, just squirt up with each other with this packet separating them. Now again, you got to this position after you switch these two packets, after you've already swivel cut that, and after you have dropped that on top. Now all that's gonna happen is that you're gonna come in in this position. So you come in, notice with my uh, middle finger and my thumb, so I could grab this packet and pinch it between my forefinger and my thumb. Now my middle finger is gonna extend which is going to turn that packet around in a flourishy way, and that's gonna stay on top of the deck. So if you notice, if I do this shuffle with the card face up, that card stays on top. Same with the two of diamonds, that two of diamonds stays on the bottom the entire way through because it's a full deck false shuffle. Now at speed, it looks a little bit like this. You could add your little uh, flares to it. You could put this on Instagram and say, wow, look at me guys, I'm a cardister. I do cardistry. I a uh, cardist for a living. I have never seen the sun. Go like my new picture, by the way. It says go outside, uh, which is a little bit of advice for magicians and cardistry. I have an Instagram. I don't know if you guys are aware of that because my attempts to market myself is apparently garbage. But the cut looks like that. It's a nice little bit of a flourishy Sybil variant and it uh, leaves the deck in its original order. So you could uh, be assured that you're not mixing the cards in any sort of way. But that's a little bit of a false cut, a nice little bit of a cardist, cardist move. It's my favorite cardistry move, uh, one that I just came up by combining a couple of different ideas from different people. And I hope you guys can enjoy it. I hope you guys do it and perform it. And I hope you guys have stuck around to the end of the video because usually people tend to leave the moment I say, hey, that's the, that's the trick. Uh, so I'm gonna go figure out different ways to ingest a small chair that's shaped like a Shih Tzu puppy. Yeah. <laughs>